Well, one key word that keeps coming up on today's match scene and all the media and the videos and everything that you see um, as regards match fishing these days is, is the word application. We keep seeing the same top names still keep winning and it's amazing, you know, these lads that are at the top of the game um, keep winning matches, keep doing really, really well. And at the end of the day, a lot of them are sponsored by bait companies and it's part of their role, their duty to tell everybody what kind of baits they're using. I'm obviously predominantly a feeder angler and obviously a massive part of my game is ground bait and you know when you're telling people openly what ground bait mix you're using a lot of people tend to think it's a magic formula for catching fish as they will find out and as we've all found out it's not as simple as that and what a lot of people forget is that ground bait is it's never a finished article you know you go to the bank you mix water with it and you can never say it's actually finished because it's always changing. You know, when you mix ground bait, everybody tends to mix it in a different way. Some people only add a little bit of water, some people add a lot of water. So, you know, it's like a recipe. It's like baking, if you want to say it on, on that terminology. You're adding different quantities to it for different scenarios. What the top lads are very, very good at um, is using a mix. That's fine, you know, they, they can hopefully tell you, you know, what that mix is. but. A lot of people forget that there's different ways of using mixers. I've got a mix here, for example, this is Ringer's Dark, for example, this is what I've used um, for the last year or so. And this is a mix that fits into a category where um, the consistency of it and the way that it's actually, um, sorry, the ingredients in it allows the mix to be over -wetted. You know, you mix a ground bait and there are some occasions where you want an actual dry mix. Now, dry mixes, I find, can often attract smaller fish. Um, and a lot of the matches that I fish, you're targeting bream uh, and bigger fish, certainly on at least one of the lines that you're fishing. So if you can deter smaller fish by adapting your mix, then that is obviously going to be an advantage. There are different ways of doing that. Obviously, the style of feeder you're using determines as well how your ground mate is going to perform in your swim. But one of the key ways that's won me a lot of money in the past um, is to overwet the ground bait. Now the key issue with overwetting ground bait is make sure it's a ground bait that will allow you to overwet it. There are some mixers out there that you're, you're not able to overwet them. The, the ground bait turns into a paste and that is not the type of mix that you need if you want to overwet your ground bait. So it's got to be a mix that you can overwet. And overwetting, as the name suggests, means you're actually adding extra water to the mix to, to give it a different consistency. The reason why I do this is because, like I say, it, it can stop a lot of the dryness and the dry particles coming off the mix, which hopefully will deter the attentions of smaller fish. And it creates a completely different cloud as well. Overwetting is, you know, you can do it to different consistencies. You can have it really sloppy, but obviously when you feed a fish in, it can't be too sloppy, otherwise it's going to come out of the feeder when you actually cast in. So there's all that to take, take into account as well. What I tend to do is when I've got my ground bait that's on my side tray, my normal mix, if you want to call it a standard consistency, I always have that on my tray. And what I tend to do is partition parts of the bowl off or whatever, um, whatever ground bait bowl you're using and just use one portion of it, whether it be a corner or just one area. And all you simply do is add water to it. And you don't have to do it in one big go. And what you're doing by adding water to it is you're changing the whole way that the ground bait is going to perform. Okay. And this is, like I said, this, this mix fits into that category where you can overwet it. Um, and what that will do is it just means that the ground bait, if you mix it right, if you overwet it to the right consistency, it will almost go down like a wet ball. So there's going to be more of your mix getting to the bottom. It's going to be more inert, but obviously there are different, um, consistencies that you can actually mix that to. So if you do want to make it even sloppier than that, you can add more water to it and that's going to create more of a cloud up in the water. So if you're fishing shallow water, that can be very good for that sort of scenario. So it's something that I would always call a low risk trigger. Okay, I'm sure we've all got to a stage in a match where you've wanted to do something to try and trigger a bite. You might have caught early, the middle part of the match, it's difficult. And you want to just to try something to catch you an extra fish. This is a great way of trying to trigger bites. I've done it on so many occasions and it's won me a lot of money. Just by doing that during a session, it can suddenly trigger your, your swim into life. You can catch a couple of extra quick fish. And by the term low risk, I use that term purely because you haven't changed anything. It's not like you've piled a lot of bait in. If it doesn't work, you've ruined your peg. You know, it's not that kind of a trigger. This is a trigger that you can do and it's not gonna harm your peg in any way because it's the mix you're already using. And if it doesn't work, 
try it two or three times, two or three casts with it. If it doesn't work, just go back to what you were doing before. So it's a very, very low risk type of trigger. And it's something that, you know, it will take time for you to work out properly. And you need to look at the types of feeder that you use with this, because you might need to change the style of your feeder to cast this sort of consistency ground bait but obviously that will depend on the range that you're fishing but it's just thinking outside the box about using your favorite mix which i'm sure a lot of you have already got but it's about not just sitting there using the mix how it is think that you know there are two or three maybe even four different ways of using the same mix but to try and trigger bites in a session particularly when it's hard and this is the kind of thing that when we talk about application the top lads are very very good at because this is how they keep finding those extra two or three fish.